This video is sponsored by Anchor. A little bit of nostalgia because I've been here before, thought about it for years, always wondered about it. And finally, we're going to see if it's still there. All right, well, here's a bit of a problem. Hey everybody, Syntax77 here. It is February. I am in West Virginia, Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, actually. And I am in the mood for a little backpacking. Got three days, two nights, and perhaps similar to my last video, a little bit of nostalgia because I've been here before and I'm on a search for something well, we'll get into those details once I get on the trail, but it should be interesting. Right there is Big Blue, the big old pack. Yep, winter style. Although right now it is beautiful out. It is afternoon. I just drove down, didn't do the hotel thing, but that sun is going to be sinking fast. Luckily, it's like 61 degrees right now, which is pretty crazy. Yesterday, it was in the 30s down here easily, and I think it's going to swing back to the 30s tonight. And perhaps we'll get a little bit of rain, but I got my tarp. I got my hammock system, shelter, some goodies like a fry pan and a saw and whatnot. All kinds of fun stuff. So let's get to it. No time like the present. I guess we got to put this thing on. It is heavy. Hopefully, I'll get through it. We got some uphill to do, but nothing too crazy. At least we're not wearing snowshoes, right? So, all clipped in. And I believe we're headed this way. Right now, we're in the Harper's Ferry national park and i believe the designation would also be national historic area down here is a connector trail and that's going to get us to ultimately the appalachian trail which runs right through harper's ferry this is a pretty uh popular trail town for people and ahead here is the river as we duck out of the wind you can kind of see it through the trees and over to a pedestrian bridge we'll hop over that and then we'll be joined up with the appalachian trail sorry about the wind it's just how it is as those temps drop uh, it's probably going to cause a little bit more wind there we go it's getting a little calmer now so up here will be the bridge and you'll actually get a view of Harper's Ferry, at least a little bit. It's a pretty cool town. A lot of train activity comes through here. And speaking of that, that is where my little nostalgia angle comes from. It was about five going on six years ago. I came down here with my friend Mike. And the reason we did was we decided we wanted to do a trip from Wilmington, where we live, that involved no driving, just get on a train and find somewhere that an Amtrak station basically dumps you right off with the trail. And the closest thing to us was Harper's Ferry. This was about a three hour drive or so for me. And the train was probably a little more than that, but it was pretty cool. We hopped on the train and it dumped us off right in the middle of Harper's Ferry. And we continued along on our hike pretty similar to today um, we got a late start as well but the cool thing was for those of you a few of you probably not many that have actually been on the channel for that long you may remember that video and Mike and I came out for geez three or four days and when we have time on our hands <laughs> we usually get the building stuff so we actually made a big old hearth basically a fireplace i mean a mega one 
This is Harper's Ferry. Walk that thing. Take rocks and throw it around. You see any pre-existing campsites anywhere in the middle of nowhere where we are, Mike? No. No. So we're going to make our own. It's coming together into something. You can see right now it's just hollow inside. We just got to give it a little height so that it kind of channels it. See it's over there. A little height just to suck it up out of our faces off to the side there. Uh, well, I mean, it's probably the biggest fire pit, if you want to call it, that I've uh, ever seen us do. It's about five feet tall. <laughs> now I should probably do a disclaimer and say kids don't try this at home. It could collapse. We'll call this for ed uh, entertainment purposes only because believe me you, yeah that could collapse. Now I should point out all the small stones are mostly for the chimney. Dude, yeah. you rocked it. Now I'll stand back while it falls. It's working. That fire is really high. Let's go to the chimney. Um, later on it'll die down in. Hopefully it'll just be smoke coming out of the chimney, but that is a lot of rocks. I mean, it'll take a long time to heat up, but once they do, you got a nice rotisserie right there. You can flip it back and forth, get those sweet potatoes in. It's looking pretty good, Mike. Fireplace is fully loaded. My goal is to find out if it's still standing. I've thought about it for years, always wondered about it. And finally, we're going to see if it's still there. It's right outside of the National Park area. You're not allowed to camp in the actual historic area. I did give them a permit up there. They're aware I'm here. But I have to hike out of the historic area. And that'll be a couple miles after we pass that bridge or so. So we'll see what happens today. I may just get myself into a legal spot and uh, set up for tonight if it's dark, right? I don't want to be looking for this thing um, with my headlamp. And then maybe tomorrow we'll wake up and continue along and try to find it. For people who follow the channel, you're probably wondering how could you not find it because you record GPS track data for all your trips and make them available for download. Well, for whatever reason, and this was years ago, I didn't post the GPS data. I don't know if I was being paranoid that I wanted to hide our fireplace. I don't think so. I thought it would have been cool if somebody else found it and gave me an update on it. But for whatever reason, I don't know if the data got corrupted or what, all I have is a photo on my website that I kind of used with the topo lines to try to figure out a rough estimation of where it is. So this is not going to be quite as easy as just following my breadcrumbs from before. In a strange way, I guess that just makes it all a bit more interesting. And you can see now we're already down to road level almost as the water flows. town 1.2 miles to believe we're just following the road here until we get to the bridge all right here we go under the bridge and over. Loudon Heights, basically the area we're going. So we're doing Appalachian Trail South, hence the white blazes. And this may not be what you expect for the Appalachian Trail, but there's only one way over to Shenandoah River. And it's this way. So that's our ridge up there. We're going to get over here, go straight up that, and then double back that way. Look at that. That thing is flowing.
finally starting to leave that highway noise behind. I do remember this. Although it was pitch black when we did it. After a day on the train, we were done. And this was the final push. You can feel that temp dropping. I was banking on some colder temps because as a throwback to that previous trip, I actually picked up some sausage links. They're in my pack here, but <laughs> 61 degrees isn't great. Feels like it's back into the 50s now, but I could really use uh, back into the, at least the 40s or the 30s to make me comfortable with carrying that. But I figure if I do find a hearth, I can sharpen up a stick, make a little rotisserie, cook up some sausage, got some tortillas. They pack down a little nicer than hot dog buns, which does sound pretty good right now, but we'll see. They'll at least be good tonight, but the problem is I don't know that I'm gonna find a hearth. The sun's gonna go down pretty soon. But we'll see. The other problem with the higher temps is um, I was hoping for some remnants of snow. But I think the sun today melted it out of way. So I um, really, if there's no snow to melt, there's no water on this bridge. So all I have to go on is what I packed in. And I got some smaller bottles squirreled away in addition to my bigger bottles. Probably got five plus liters of water, which is pretty heavy, but I'm glad to have it right now. That's another factor. We'll see how long we can make it on the water that I packed in. But before we get off the grid here, I want to take a minute to thank our sponsor for this trip video, Anchor and their Model 535 Portable Power Station. This thing is a beast. Whether you're car camping, off-grid at a cabin in the woods, or dealing with an unexpected power outage, you can power it all with its nine simultaneous outputs. You got four wall outlets, one USB-C, three USB-A, and one car charging outlet, providing a whopping 512 watt hours of capacity for virtually all of your essential devices. You can see here I got my laptop hooked up to it and I'm also able to charge my flashlight, headlamp, and even a camera all at the same time. With a premium lithium ion battery at its core, it can endure 3,000 recharge cycles providing six times longer lifespan than the industry average. No matter what your situation, you can recharge it in a variety of ways. You can use a solar panel for renewable energy, you can use the included car charging cable in your vehicle, or the included wall charger in a USB-C port for a quick charge time of 0 to 80% in just 2.4 hours. That's fast. It's got a max output of 500 watts, giving you serious juice for high draw devices or the ability to simultaneously recharge multiple devices at once. I even used mine to power my freezer. For unexpected power outages, you can use the built-in light bar to light up your area and get things done. It's got a rugged design, a nice handle on top for portability. And speaking of portability, if you want something even smaller and lighter, well, Anchor's got you covered check out the model 521 it's got an even smaller size and weight but it still has the same battery technology and fast charge capability while sporting 256 watt hours of capacity and 200 watts of output power these are both awesome units if you want more information i've got links for both in my video description where you can get more details or get your very own anchor portable power station today so thank you anchor for sponsoring this video now let's get off the grid and back onto the trail Plugging away on the Appalachian Trail South. Get up on top of this ridge. Ah, Blue Blazes. It's a Loudon Heights trail and split rock down that way. Don't quite have the time for that right now. Keys Gap on the Appalachian Trail is this general direction. Not gonna quite go that far for sure but that is our direction 
maybe we can hit that on the way back we'll see how uh friday morning goes i do have two more days in front of me now uh, last day i want to make decent time so i can get back to the vehicle and start driving home but tomorrow's wide open which is nice oh there's the moon through the trees there if you can see it nice half moon so that should keep things a little lit up tonight as long as it doesn't get too overcast although that does remind me at around 7 p.m there is the threat of some drizzle and rain that's always fun but it is starting to level out a little bit not quite as intense the further we go the more it should just be a level ridge walk and then over to the right where it drops down after we get out of the national park that is where the hearth at least used to be so that sun pushing me on i should probably take advantage of this flat area put the afterburners on There's actually some sort of animal up here I'm thinking it was a raccoon but it was really dark it was too small to be a bear unless it was a cub and i doubt that oh there he is raccoon oh a couple of them raccoon party the good news is we're within a half mile of where i want to start searching and the sun is still up there which is awesome where are my raccoon friends oh yeah he's a big guy his friend's a little smaller bye guys so yeah cruising along we should be at the property line for the national historic district soon and i think we just might be searching for the hearth tonight but i do remember this kind of raised pile of rocks on the side here we cruised along and eventually when those went away cut right started searching for camp so we'll see it'd be really cool if this thing's still standing even if it's a pile of rocks maybe i can rebuild it tomorrow you can see some glare off the shenandoah river over there too i'm a little sweaty and it's getting cold so i'm hoping this last half mile i dry out a little bit and then i'll put some fresh layers on all right the other side of this sign over here is fair game now i just look for these topo lines and head off to the right i just stopped to put on a shirt that is a cat fairly certain fast holy crap look at it go all right definitely gonna hang the food bag up tonight but i got a heavier shirt on i'm having a little pop tart snack and at this point from looking at my gps notes topograph lines and also memory i remember started getting flat in here and that's when we started looking for somewhere to camp we went this way it didn't end up working out 
but it went down to another shelf and I think we backtracked a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and see how that works out. Um, I do remember also that the, the boundaries are kind of wedged out. So I'm, I'm not in the park right now, but it starts again over here um, towards the river. So if I hit little white markers that tell me I'm re-entering the historic site, I know I went too far because we were just on the other side of that and down in here. So another bite of Pop-Tart. Say goodbye to the sun. See if we can't find this. Hmm. Okay. Tapping in to previous self. I probably would have came over here. And started looking. Matter of fact, there's a little fire ring that somebody made. Right there. Looks like they had a tent there. Or maybe a maybe a hammock. But that's not where we were. We went down this ridge. Wow, this looks messy. All right, bingo. Feeling better. I remember this. It's like an old logging road. It's not an official path, but you can see how it's kind of opened up. And I remember coming down and following this. And in the distance, way down there, I can see a placard that says where the National Park begins again. So, just going to follow this up, keep my eye to the right, or the left now, sorry, and uh, let's see what we can do here. I'm getting excited. I feel like we're in the right spot. Even if I don't find it tonight, I'm, I'm fairly confident that I'll find it in the morning, but it would be awesome to camp right by it. It's pretty big, so I'll just keep an eye out. Alright, well, here's a bit of a problem. I feel like I'm very close to the area. The view over there looks similar. I thought I found where we were, but I haven't. It's getting dark. I feel some sprinkles and I hear some precipitation in the distance. So I think at this point I got to get a tarp up um, to protect myself and um, not ideal, but we might have to just scout around tomorrow because I feel raindrops right now. Let's get a tarp. No joke, like 30 steps later, and I found it because I have pictures of the rocks around here. Sounds crazy, but this is it. Ah, you probably can't see me, so I'm gonna drop the pack, get my headlamp out, and I'll show you what we got going on. So, this I know for a fact is the rock because I have pictures of it the rock to be used as a little cooking area and unfortunately <laughs> that pile there is what was once the mighty hearth Believe me, you. Yeah, that could collect. freeze and thaw and whatnot has not done it well so it's uh, collapsed That'll probably be a project for tomorrow if I can get it back to operating condition. But yeah, this is it. I do recognize this area now. 
because like I said, I had some photos of that big tree right there. Um, and we hung our hammocks right around over there. So right now, I'm just gonna get a tarp up and take it from there. Um, I do have a fry pan, so I can make my sausage in a fry pan, do some wraps, and um, we'll figure things out in the morning. And there's still some animals circling around. I can hear them out there, but that's okay. One thing at a time. So I am back. Somehow I found it. Not in the condition I wanted, but there it is. Let's get some shelter and see what we can do because it is dark now. We'll see it tomorrow, but I got my Cuban tarp, hammock, my spot messenger to let my wife know everything's good. Let's reach in here. What do we got? Well, it may not be the chimney hearth that I was expecting, but I did dig it out a little bit. Made a nice little enclosure at least. And one of the viewers of my channel, I forget your name, I'll pop it up there, but he recommended this after my last trip where all the wood was super wet. I couldn't get it going and he recommended this pocket bellows so i picked it up on amazon and it's basically kind of like a car antenna it uh collapses down like that very light very small but i can pull it out it gives me oh about two feet of distance I can blow on the fire without melting my beard. And it's also very concentrated. Um, luckily right now, it's not that wet, the wood. But it's quite convenient to use this. So I have some bark, some sticks, and I'm just making a nice little base. And then I'm gonna see if I can uh, get some sausage going. Yeah, this thing's pretty awesome. I got multiple backpacking meals, but I am in the mood for some protein. Hopefully that uh, bobcat or whatever it was doesn't come and try to kill me for this. Because I'm not going to eat all this tonight. I will uh, reseal it, put it back in the bag, hang it from a tree. But I got some hot sausage. And in my bag, those are tortillas. I'm hungry. I kind of wish I brought some mustard. I didn't, but that's okay. And the fire's going good. Very nice. Got nice protection from the wind, which is coming from over here. And tomorrow we got nothing better to do so we can rebuild this, but at least I have a nice base right here. These giant rocks. The main problem is um, I just don't have the manpower uh, Mike and I together put the giant slabs over top to actually make the roof and the chimney and that's not quite going to happen right now but I got fire and pretty soon with a little bit of luck I'll have sausage certainly one of the nice things about a unofficial campsite Plenty of wood around. This is standing, so it's dry. Bust him right through it. Not bad at all. Put that on top there. Got a nice base with the coals. Maybe hit it with the bellows again. Why not? Not 
pad. It's like a blowtorch. It is dark out. That half moon is not doing a whole lot, although the stars are out. Oh, there's a half moon right there. But it's still pretty dark. Ooh, but I'm hungry. Got a green stick, which hopefully won't burn too well. So I can put my sausage on that. And, uh, Get some fresh smoked sausage, I guess. Once I get this whittled down. That is incredibly hot, incredibly good. Strains and the distance, having a hot meal. Stoke the fire, Let's see what tomorrow brings. <sighs> good morning, everybody. Here in the hammock. The sun is back out and a new day begins. I'm just uh, swinging in the breeze and waking up. I definitely slept in. Uh, woke up around 7.30 and just been laying here relaxing. <laughs> Actually, all of a sudden it's like 7.56. It's almost eight o'clock. But just been laying here deciding what I want to do today. Took a look at my map. There is an official AT campsite, at least listed on the maps wise and legal, um, down about a mile continuing in the direction I was going yesterday. So I was looking at that, but honestly, I did come here with a goal in mind and I got to go back out the same way I came no matter what. So. I'm on the fence, but I'm thinking I'll probably just leave this campsite, uh, site rather, sorry, set up. And um, I don't think anybody's gonna be down here to even see it because I'm pretty far off trail, yet legal. That sun is beaming in. And actually, let's check the temp. What do we got? 41, it was 38. Um, so we've climbed three degrees since I've been laying here in the hammock. I think what I may do is um, leave the campsite set up and it'll be backtracking, but I could roll without a pack or at least take the top section off my pack and um, run down to Loudon Heights, which we never saw on that previous trip because we had a train to catch that last day and we just beelined it right back to Harper's Ferry. But maybe that'll be what we do today. We'll go and see what that looks like. It's supposed to have great views of Harper's Ferry and uh, Maryland because um, we're right on the border of three states right now, Virginia, Maryland, West Virginia. So yeah, that could be a good idea. But first things first, get the boots on and uh, get the blood flowing here.
there we go. Whew. Gotta love putting on boots that aren't frozen solid. That is pretty nice. So here we are. There's my fire pit. And there's my hammock and tarp. Even brought a stool along with me. Didn't mention that last night, but I've had this thing for many years. Since my very first backpacking trip, actually. Quite comfortable. An extra pound, but sometimes it's worth it. There's the tarp. Hammock and quilts. Maybe we'll look at that in a little bit. Ah. Let's go get a daylight vision of the elusive fire pit. Well, it's a pit now. It used to be a hearth. I did what I could to build it up last night. And like I said, it's nowhere near its former glory, but it is a heck of a pit. And uh, no one would ever know it's here. So there's like an old logging path there. Then there's a second one. And then that ridge and the trail's kind of tucked on the other side of it. You're not actually walking directly on top of the ridge right there. So... Yeah, you would never see it from up there. Many trees have fallen since the last time I was here. I can tell that. <laughs> and then again, so is, so is the hearth. And look at that base rock. That was not here. That was a two-man job, but I don't have Mike with me this time. But we actually moved that base plate, the two of us. And I think we found it like down there and walked it all the way over. Walk that thing. Take rocks and fill it around. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, all right, well, at least the sun is hitting me pretty good right here. Not bad. I guess we should make some sort of food. I've made a decision we're gonna do some fresh baked bread this morning for brunch and uh, a little sausage on the side so we'll use the fire for the uh, sausage the bread is uh, skillet bread so we'll do that in a pan and I guess I'll actually use my stove for the first time but let's get this fire going first. Here we go. Rustic skillet bread. Four ounces of warm water. I think I can handle that. I got about four liters left. And where's my fire starters? My wife found these and they're working pretty good. We use them in the fireplace at home, but they don't weigh too much and they light up quick. It worked good last night, so it should hopefully work good today. And this is why I like this pocket bellows so much because I just moved those logs and basically smothered my fire starter, but Brought it back to life right away. So, we'll see if we can make a nice core here. I mean, this wood is relatively dry, so I went right for the big stuff. 
didn't even mess with too much of the small twigs, which is awesome. Got another green stick. I'm gonna try to go a little more rotisserie style today. So I got a long one. I'll try to put it across the fire and slow cook the sausage because I got time. Because um, I'll work on the bread next, but might as well get the sausage on there. And um, maybe actually I'll put the stick on for a little bit, burn off some of these little edges and get it cured a little. That should work. Let's see how we want to go here. Maybe across there. Probably do that to cook it. It's a decent amount of space. It's actually pretty high up, but whoop, there goes my logs. But maybe for now, I'll put it a little lower just to. Uh, burn off some of those excess fibers and harden it up a little bit and it's warming up so I think I'm gonna switch out the Russian hat almost make me too hot Let's go back to the regular knit hat and then we might even be switching to a baseball cap soon a little bit of clouds in the sky there's some blue up there too which is nice all right, so what do I have to do to this bread here? Organic unbleached white flour, buttermilk, honey, and natural yeast. Looks like I add a half cup of slightly warm water to the pouch and stir it to create a soft dough and then let it set aside 10 minutes to rise. So I need warm water. Hadn't uh, thought about that, so we should probably grab a pot. So let's put four ounces of water in this and we'll just sit it in the fire that should do it All right, looks like I got my water a little too hot, but let it cool down. Now we'll pour it in. Now it says massage for two minutes to blend and let it rise. Got sausage over there, slow cooking. Looks like they're moving along, but maybe I'll reposition. Get some nice coals underneath of those guys. Sun is about midway. And it's only about 10 o'clock. That's the way it is in February. At least it's not freezing cold. piece of gear this uh, diffuser it's supposed to be good for cooking the bread so this should spread the flame around once I get that to settle down um, I'm running white gas a little overkill for these conditions but it works uh, white gas is good because it can go down to below zero and still work but in my case I already had it set up from the last trip in 
New Hampshire. So I just brought it along with me and I thought it would be better for simmering. We'll see how it works with the new diffuser. Let me set that right down on there. There we go. I got a rock to keep it from tipping over. And then my fry pan should sit right on top and that will spread the heat out. Because the next step is add a little bit of olive oil, which I have here, to the pan. And then pour in my bread and then hit it with a lid. I don't have a lid for this frying pan, but I do have some uh, tin foil. So we'll see how it goes. There's some calories right there. Maybe turn the heat up a tiny bit. So, instructions say, cook until pillowy, which I think we have right now. Hopefully the bottom is not burnt. And now they say drizzle a little more olive oil over top and flip it, which I'm gonna do my best with my spoon here. So, let's see what happens. Let's see what the bottom looks like. A little drizzle. in half. I'll deal with it. Oh boy. <laughs> that looks like some Pizza Hut deep crust, deep dish pizza. My goodness. Look at that. Woo! Oh yeah. I'm happy about that. Let's give it another five minutes or so. And time to eat. Eat it right out of the pan. Man, that is hot. Oh, <laughs> wow. Let's take a little piece of sausage, a piece of bread. No complaints from me. Hear that wind picking up. Some semi dark clouds overhead, but I never got that rain last night, which is awesome. So hopefully, we can do a little day hike. See what kind of views we can get from the ridge. Mm. Wow. Head on out. I did lock a waypoint for where I am. Should just be a few miles to get down to the overlook and of course an equal distance back so I don't know maybe five to six miles round trip but as you can see I am traveling light today. This is just the uh, Normally it would be the top pouch of my backpack, but it turns into a hip belt, where in my case, I just do it as a sling over my shoulder. Got some snacks, water. We're going straight out. It's not quite the way that I came in. It's a little rough and rocky in here, which is why I didn't come in this way, but I'm gonna go for it. Hope that sun keeps coming out. Ooh, there's some wind up here. I can hear that. All right. See a white blaze up ahead. Fifty-eight degrees. It is getting warm. 
as the wind picks up just got to get towards this intersection wind is ripping through here trail closed but according to my map split rock should be over here there's a lot of bridges around here in Harper's Ferry down in there the actual Harper's Ferry and it's pretty cool they got two bridges that split off right there railroad trestle you can kind of see that when we took amtrak we came in right across there and they also use that for csx and um, cargo train activity as well but yeah here we are in the wind Harper's Ferry. It's winter, so I don't know that a whole lot is open over there, but during the summer or spring peak trail season when Appalachian Trail hikers are coming through here, that's a pretty cool town. They got some ice cream shops and places to get breakfast and whatnot. Soak this in a little bit, relax, have a little trail mix, watch the water and get a couple views. Not bad, but I do believe that I am already dreaming about the next meal. And as long as the Bobcats haven't hauled it away, I think I got an idea for a fun dinner. The sun is in that familiar position. So let's get back home and see what we can do. So, got the fire going, time for dinner, early dinner, but that's fine. Got the stove heating up, got my pasta beef bolognese from Packet Gourmet. Typically what you do with this, um, it's a no strain pasta, so you boil the pasta with 12 ounces of water, and then you add your other components. But, I've got time on my side, and nothing else better to uh, do so what I'm gonna do is have a little fun and before I get into that I'm gonna make with the one sausage link that I have left a stock I'm gonna take this sausage link out of the casing put it in the pan I got a little bit of olive oil right there and the kit came with some Parmesan and olive oil for uh, later as well. But for right now, I'm going to saute the sausage. I'm gonna take my knife here, take this out of the casing, nice and crumbly. At least that's my thought. I'll use some hand sanitizer for my hands after doing this, of course. There's that. I got the diffuser on there. I figured why not? It seems to make a nice flame pattern. So my pan with my olive oil. Sausage. I'm gonna put 
this casing right in the fire. Burn that off. There we go. All right. We'll get this up to a saute. of water, let that rehydrate, stare at the fire, and wait. Man, that smells good. When that all comes together, it's going to be good. The sun has gone, but the pasta is still going. I've boiled out most of the water. I saw this over here. I'll cook it a little bit more. And that sauce did cool down from being out here. It's back down into the 30s. So, eat this in front of the fire. Because it is hiker midnight. A little Parmesan cheese on top. Here we are. Spent about an hour or so, maybe more. Woo, that's hot. Making it. But I think it was well worth the effort. Let's see what a bite is like. Woo. Very hot, but very good. A little crushed red pepper in there. That is incredible, so. Got the fire going pretty good. Got a podcast on. It's only like six something, but I'm going to enjoy this. Hit the hammock. And um, just relax for the night. I think that was a good day. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Good morning once again. What's the temp out here? 37. Still dry, no rain. That's nice. Slept good. I've been using a 20 degree quilt. This is actually my wife's quilt. Um, 20 degree top quilt and this zero degree full length under quilt. And it's only been going down into the 30s. Um, so, I have been plenty toasty. Plus, I'm lazy. I just sleep in my jacket. So, I haven't even had the quilt fully around. Like, you know, it can go around your neck and be secured. I've just had it laying over top of me this both nights. Feels good. Got some birds out. And it's about 7 o'clock. And, um... Yeah, another nice night. 
in the hammock, the old Dutchware. So, I guess I'll get up. Don't really feel too hungry, but take stock of how much water I have. I have at least one like 20 ounce bottle left, uh, which isn't a whole lot, but it should get me out of here. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna make coffee with that or just keep it as drinking water. We'll see, but yeah. All right, well, once again, time to put the boots on. tarp flip back on my ridge line there and I think I'm just gonna kind of sit and enjoy the view a little bit it shouldn't be too bad of a hike out so I'll just drink a little water soak in the sights and then uh, take this stuff down and we'll say goodbye to the fireplace Tarp is down. You may have noticed I actually was sleeping backwards in this. It has a bug net at the end to drape over my face, but in winter, I don't really need that. So I usually just sleep the other way just to keep my face clear and get a nice view in the morning. That's the hammock. And my Kaika fuel wrapping pack. It has the top load kind of luggage style. So it's real nice and easy for me to load my stuff or access a piece of gear without digging all the way to the bottom. I do like that. So believe it or not, that will squeeze in once I zipper it up and uh, throw a couple more of my items in and we'll be good to go that sun is creeping up into the sky all right here we go pack is back on big old pack doing a quick check of the campsite looks clear and uh Say goodbye to the fireplace here. Not quite the hearth I wanted it to be, but maybe five years more and I'll get Mike to come back with me and build it proper. Or, hey, I'm actually posting the GPS data properly this time, so feel free to come on out. It is a legal site and um, you can build it better with your friend maybe someday but that is it for me i even put a little three rock cairn Let's see if that stays there or not all right straight up here oh wow look finally found it on the way out one little patch of snow. Don't think that would have been worth drinking last night or melting for drinking. But there's a little bit here. I have a feeling if I was here a couple days earlier, probably would have had some more snow on the ground. But I just barely made it with my water. Got enough for the hike out. A beautiful morning on the ridge. I almost forgot about this little fire ring here. So if you ever did come out, basically, if this fire ring is still here with this log or down tree in front of it, it's pretty much a straight shot from here to Hearth Camp, as I guess I'll christen it. Oh 
going back to the good old blue and white glaze junction. It is all downhill for me now. It's up to the low 40s at this point. I checked my thermometer and the low point for the whole trip was only 31 degrees or something like that. So a lot warmer than I guess I had in my head. So if you're wondering why my pack is so ginormous, I basically had just a lot of cold weather clothing layers and gear like my heavier duty stove stuff like that I was prepared for much more winter conditions but didn't quite get that I think it just ended up being a bit warmer even than they had forecasted but on top of that my last trip was up in New Hampshire for Mount Washington snowshoeing and whatnot sub-zero temps I think I really just still had that mentality in my head. Couldn't quite picture how mild it would be. I mean, I had extra gloves that I didn't even need, all, all kinds of stuff like that. But that's all right. Right now, I got a lot less food and water in the pack, so it's nice and light. And feeling pretty good this morning. And you can hear that road noise creeping back in so you know what that means pretty soon we'll be back at the bridge And there she is, made it back to the Jeep. Always a good sign when that's still here. Ended up being a beautiful day, blue skies, little clouds up there, but ended up being a great trip. You know, not a ton of mountain views, but a lot of good campfire cooking. We found the fireplace, had some just fun food in the woods. I really enjoyed it. So speaking of food, I am hungry once again. I haven't eaten yet today, so I'm gonna have to take care of that right after I get this pack off. So thanks everybody out there for joining me on this one. Till next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now, it's cheeseburger time. <laughs>